Hello, Audis Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0G, here with episode number 622 of Ask Dave. And our question today comes from Robert Miller, W4RKM. And before we get into um, Robert's question, let me just uh, remind you, please, to subscribe, click like, and click on the bell. Now let's take a look at his question. It says, Hi Dave, I really enjoy your videos and thank you for taking the time to teach others. I'm a new ham and I have an ICOM 7300. The 7300 is the reference station radio. I've got this reference station all set up. So if you buy just those things, you'll have a station that work. Or you can substitute in and out for different features however you want. I've watched countless videos on the functions and capabilities of the rig. There are a lot. My question is, can you explain the difference in applications for the various noise and filter functions? It seems they all do the same job. Now, they change the audio, yes, but in many different ways. I'm sure my understanding is incorrect. No, uh, but I'm just not sure how and when I should use passband filters, noise blankers, IP plus function, etc. Thanks in advantage for helping out a rookie. Now, first, I want to commend to your attention the manual. This is the full manual. There's about um, a condensed version of this comes printed, but I'd go ahead and print out the full manual. Now, I've been told that if you go down to Office Depot and ask them to print in color on both sides. And this is printed in color on both sides. It can be quite expensive. Uh, but I do recommend printing it in color, even if you do go through a cartridge or two on your inkjet or uh, part of your toner on a laser. Uh, it comes out to be, it doesn't say here, quite a few pages anyway. Okay. And as uh, we've added functions with uh, uh, changes to the uh, uh, firmware. I just stick the pages uh, in the back here, so I've always got this. This manual explains where every function is. It doesn't necessarily tell you why you would use it. So what we're going to do is take a look at the... Um, this right here is the Yesu. No. <laughs> this right here is the ICOM IC7300. We're looking at the screen. We're looking at 40 meters. Um, and it's listening to a signal here, which it's uh, picking up in the audio. This bottom portion is the audio. You get it across in frequency. So you can see the frequency. And then over here, you get it in time domain, and you can watch it uh, go out. You can change the levels of it if you want to uh, make it not be quite so big, but you're seeing the speech waveform there. Up here is your spectrum analyzer that shows the whole uh, band. I happen to like to do this this way. It's a personal thing. You can do differently if you want to. I've got the bottom of the band to the top of the band, so you can see activity all the way across it. This one right here, of course, is FT8. And we're listening to a lower sideband signal. Now, let's look at some of the things that come through. Um, if you go to down here where it says Menu, and you then you go to Function right here, this button says Function. Okay, here are a bunch of functions, and these have a lot of the ones that you asked about. Preamp or attenuator, let's talk about that one. Okay, you can also get to that button um, by going over here underneath the knob. It says preamp and attenuator. Preamp one, preamp two, preamp off, and it keeps going through that. However, if you hold it down, you can turn the attenuator on and off. For normal operations, you leave it off. Okay, so let's take a look 
at this. By the way, these uh, functions are settable. We'll go back here. So preamp, okay, uh, attenuator on and off. Now the preamp, let me show you what a, a preamp is. You get a signal, comes into the front end, a uh, front end, end of your receiver, okay? A preamp is an amplifier stuck in, the preamp is an amplifier that is stuck right in here. Normally you do not want this. A preamp sets the receiver's um, noise figure. If you have an amplifier here, you will add noise a little tiny bit. You put in the preamp 2, which is a stronger, you're going to add noise a little bit more okay if you have it off which is where you would have it normally on um, 80 through well 160 through about oh 15 meters you wouldn't use the preamp you might use it uh, on um, 12 10 and 6 you might if you want if it will help you hear better uh, because the signals are weaker on these bands, all right? So the preamp would normally be off. What the preamp does, and I'll show you here as we turn on the preamp, okay? So I'm going to go uh, here to where you can see um, the signal on the waterfall. Notice the orange that's up there? Go away. Um... Notice the orange that's up there? That's the actual signal above the background noise. Now, if I turn the preamp on, you note that everything gets stronger. If I turn it on again, everything really gets stronger. Now, what you're doing is adding noise in there. For those lower bands, your best bet is with the preamp off. Now, why do you need an attenuator? See, an attenuator really cuts that back. An attenuator is for when you have very nearby uh, interference that is so loud that it grabs the receiver front end. You can put that attenuator in there. When would you normally use the attenuator? You wouldn't. It's just there for that one situation. I used to have a um, nearby novice when I was a novice. His transmitter was so close to mine uh, that every time he transmitted, I heard him across the entire band. You can get rid of that thing with the attenuator, okay? Now, let's talk about some of the next ones. That's the preamp and attenuator. You use it if the signal's weak, if it helps. The automatic gain control. Okay, this is a function in the IF, and there are three things you can do slow, fast, and medium. Um, I would normally use slow for a single sideband, and frankly, no, no more than medium for CW. Some people like the fast where it acts instantly. The purpose of the automatic gain control um, is if you look in here, some of these signals are much stronger than others. When you tune into a really strong signal like this, you note that it's about the same power over here as this rather weak signal that I put in. Okay. Now the reason for that is because the automatic gain control automatically changes the volume on the RF side so that the signals sound about the same, okay? Now, this is um, doesn't have a nice button on the screen, but you come in here, do AGC fast, mid, 
slow. And uh, if you hold on to that there, you've got fast, medium, and slow. These are the attack times. I'm sorry, the release times. Uh, six seconds for the slow, 0.3 seconds for the fast. Now, if you use this on CW, the gain will go way down on each dit and come right back up after each uh, dit is over. Uh, mid takes a little while longer. Slow takes quite a while and takes into account the fact that single sideband signals normally fade. Now, you can do the same thing with the RF gain control. Now on this radio, this up at the top is the highest the RF gain control will go. If you go this way, you get in the squelch, okay? But if you turn the RF gain down, notice the signal goes down. Notice the screen goes down. Uh, on the one hand, it's like you're putting in an attenuator, but what you're really doing is setting the gain of the RF and IF stages, but not including the audio stage. The audio stage you set here. Okay. Um, but this, you see, if you've got real a real strong station you're listening to, you can move the RF gain down a little bit so that you can pick up that station well in some of the interfering stations go away. Okay, so that's RF gain. Um, a lot of people don't use it, they just have it turned up to max, and that's fine, but it's very handy if you're listening to a strong signal, turn the RF gain down so all you hear is the strong signal. You can get some very good results that way. Let's go now to a notch filter, automatic notch. Now, this does one thing, um, if you have, oops, if you have um, a CW signal over here, let's go to where we have CW signals. Here's a CW signal right here. Let's turn up the volume. Notice it's taking that carrier and dropping it way back. If we turn this thing off, then the signal comes through strong. See, what the notch does is it removes single carriers from in the signal. Now, why is that important? If you are up in the voice band here and somebody starts tuning up near you, you can actually use the automatic notch to notch out that frequency. Now, this, this used to be common back when uh, people used AM because AM has a carrier. People would tune up on top of each other. Uh, it would sound rather bad. So notches were created for that. Uh, however, we don't have that problem anymore. So the automatic notch won't, won't do much for you. It may, it may. There may be circumstances where you need it. Um, oops. Okay. The Marshall Fire, that was a terrible thing. My kids had to evacuate that. Okay, let's go back to function now and look at these. That's the noise blanker. Now, noise reduction is oh the noise blanker can be used note that there's an extra position well noise blanking level depth and width okay if you get like one of those woodpecker stations you can use the noise blanker to cut that out also in the rare event that you have ignition noise uh, you can hear that too um 
Let's see what we got here. Okay. Um, what are we looking at? So we've looked at notch, which will eliminate carriers. The noise blanker eliminates pulse noise. It might be somewhat effective against uh, the over-the-horizon radars that we hear a lot. Okay, just hold down on that. You can play with the levels and see if you can't make that thing go away. Okay. Um, now, noise reduction is a wonderful feature. Absolutely wonderful feature. It's on all modern radios. If you hold down on this, you'll see there's a level. So as you're tuning, now there's that carrier. So I can hit the automatic notch. And the carrier goes away. Okay, mostly. Now, if I uh, also hit noise reduction, function noise reduction. You can choose the level that you like for that noise reduction. It actually does digitally remove a lot of the noise. You'll find that a very useful function. I normally just leave it on. Now let's go down here to IP+. IP+, introduces a dither in the received signal uh, so that uh, artifacts that are smaller than the least significant bit can be heard. In actual practice, it's not going to make a bit of difference. I usually leave it off, but you can leave it on if you want. It's not going to make any difference, okay? That's the intercept point plus. It affects the intercept point slightly by a couple dB, okay? So for most use, this is not going to give you anything. If you want, you can try it with it on. Now, these are transmit functions here. Voice-operated relay, which I don't use. Uh, this is compression, and if you're going to use compression you need to set the amount of compression follow the mistakes i'm sorry don't follow the mistakes in the manual uh, <laughs> um, follow the manual exactly for how to set the compression i leave compression on all the time uh, tbw is the transmit bandwidth you have some choices wide narrow and so on and uh, I leave that usually wide. Now, if you're operating DX, uh, what this does is it gives you more sibilance in your signal, uh, the high frequencies. If you want to concentrate your signal just in a smaller frequency band, you can do the narrow. And what that does for you is it puts all your power in that narrower bandwidth, which can help you. For normal rag chewing, I have it on wide. Money is monitored. Uh, it's almost mandatory on CW so that you can hear yourself sending CW. But uh, people are used to the idea that if they put headphones on, plug them in the radio, when they talk, they want to hear themselves in the headphones. It's a leftover from uh, the early telephone systems. It's still used. You hear yourself in the speaker. And that's what this is. And with this, you can set a, le a, a level right here as to how much monitor you want. Go back and then go back. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. No, we don't want to hold it. I want to go to menu. Okay, so that explains these things. So we have talked about the uh, preamp, which you use like on 12 and 10 meters or 6 meters or something. It will add a little noise. It may be the difference between hearing a weak signal and not hearing one, however. And the attenuator is for when there are extremely strong signals nearby that you're hearing across the entire band. Puts in about 20 dB of attenuation, which is about 3S units. 
The notch is used to make single carriers go away. We demonstrated that. The noise blanker is for pulse or ignition noise, sometimes useful against the Chinese and Russian woodpecker radios. And the noise reduction actually does reduce the noise. You may find this is one of your most used controls. N not on its own button over here is the automatic gain control. And you pick the one that works best for you. I recommend slow for single sideband, medium for general use, and you can experiment between medium or whatever uh, for uh, CW. And the IP Plus is just there to provide a theoretical um, addition to the intercept point problem. It really doesn't do anything for most use. But if you're on a quiet band and you have an extraordinarily weak signal, that might help a little bit. And then these are for transmit over here. So there you have it. Um, let's see, Robert, I'm trying to explain what the different features on the radio will do. Now, this is, I'm demonstrating on the reference radio, which is a 7300, as I always do. Now, if you don't have a 7300, but you have a modern radio, you have all these same functions, okay? And they all work in the same way. Now, I will point out that my ICOM, I, I, let's see, it would be FTDX 3000, has um, a noise blanker on it that will actually, de it's designed to chop out the Chinese radar uh, over the horizon radar. It does a really effective job. You push that button, you can't even tell that the radar is there. And because these over the horizon radars are getting more common, um, then uh, we, will, we will need that as we go on, okay, in ham radio. So there you have it. I hope that helps, and until we next meet, 73.